Hi there, and welcome to Canceling COVID. We meet every week. We've been at this for almost two years, and I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Hopefully, you're enjoying this wonderful day, great day of weather, and we've had a real nice treat going, and uh, we appreciate you supporting us. Real talk, real solutions, real resources, people that understand and that you can relate to. We want to say thank you to our sponsor, Groundwater Solutions. It's groundwater-solutions.org, 704-596-0505, 704-596-0505. Dr. Tracia Black will join us in just a moment. I want to first say, before we go any further, thank everyone who came out and supported Praise in the Park. What an amazing time, and I just want to say I'm so grateful to our sponsors, First National Bank, Walgreens, Walmart, as well as Alexander Funeral Home, the Charlotte Area Fund, the town of Cornelius. Uh, what can I say? You guys are so generous to sow into our nonprofit and to provide support. And for the last few years, just like all other nonprofits that have had to deal with uh, the pandemic, we haven't been able to do scholarships, but guess what? This year we are back and I'm excited to share when we open up the application process and able to assist a young person. If you want to know more about the 501c3, we've been around since 2004, tanyarivens.com and then Aussie Martin Rivens Scholarship, something that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, again, so grateful for everyone who came out who supported us. And for those of you that weren't there, we know you supported us anyway. And for that, we say grateful. You can always support us by going to the website. There's an opportunity for you to sow into what we're doing in our community. Praise in the Park 2022. Again, our sponsors, Alexander Funeral Home, Walmart, Walgreens, Coca-Cola Consolidated. I think I left them out. Charlotte Area Fund and First National Bank to that. We say thank you. And we had some other uh, people who sold into as well, not as sponsors, but as friends. Quick Trip, Groundwater Solutions, Genesis Project, as well as Lake Norman Chrysler and the McIntosh Law Firm. So we say thank you for that as well. Now, I uh, met this wonderful chef and we had a chef out on Saturday as well pushing towards healthier eating habits and healthier recipes so that we can start dealing with this disparity when it comes to eating food that tastes good, but changing up what we're using so that it's healthier for us. And I know it's not an easy task, but I've been able to meet a chef who is working really hard at doing that. And uh, he's got some exciting information to share with us. Uh, he has his own barbecue sauce and I, I met him at an event and had an opportunity to try it. And I thought, wow, this guy, own to something. And we had a conversation because he also has a profession. He's a veteran that draws him into working with a lot of people around COVID as well. And so he kind of shared with me where his passion is and where his heart is in helping our community to do a better job when it comes to eating and eating healthier and also living a um, better lives so that we're not dealing with uh, some of the things that tend to plague us as a result of our diet. So I thought it would be a great opportunity for you to hear from him, him as well. So let's bring him on. Next guest is a chef. You know, I'm constantly talking about our healthy eating and changing our eating styles and healthy lifestyles. And we can't do it without some type of, uh, I guess, sacrifice is one way of putting it. So Chef Stanford Mitchum has taken time out of his busy day to talk with us. First of all, good morning and thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Absolutely. How you doing? Fantastic, Chef. So, you know, I was a part of an event that you uh, guys were doing a big outreach to get back to the community. Thank you for right. that. And that gave me an opportunity to meet you, but also to learn more about what you are doing to address some of the health disparities and to encourage others to uh, eat healthier. So first of all, let's start by introducing yourself to everyone. Okay, first of all, my name is Stanford and uh, the name of my show is uh, Cooking with Stanford, a player of one, dinner for two, date night. And in that, what I'm trying to do is bring back, um, my show whole focus is to bring back the romance to the relationship by way of the kitchen. But by the same token, I also wanna bring and promote healthy eating. Uh, everybody says they could, they're, they're a chef or they know how to cook or whatnot, but I don't want you to be feeding people fatty foods and the relationship goes south because of someone dies early because of bad eating habits. And that is so important. That's I constantly tell my husband, and that's one of the ways we started down the journey of healthy eating is I'm like, I didn't marry you for you to die on me. And exactly. said, you know, that really opened up his eyes when I was telling him. And so he went yeah. into, you know, being more conscious of the things that he's eating. Of course, the doctor encouraged him to as well. And then right. he said, you know, eventually I knew you would tap into it as well, which is more, you know, 
eating, uh, being more selective about what I eat, also uh, walking more. But you have right. really uh, made a career of this. Like when you're doing events as a chef, what are some of the creative ways that you incorporate, you know, healthy eating? Well, one of the things I want to make sure that people are getting a healthy portion. So I look at my lifestyle and how I had to change things around. Um, as a chef, you know, I, I, I'm constantly cooking any and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was getting my hands on some foods that just necessarily was not the best for me, although they taste good. Right. So I said, okay, well, I said oh, okay, so, well, how can I keep this going and make it enjoyable, not for me, but for everyone that I love and everybody I come in contact with? Mm -hmm. So I just started changing my diet, you know, and I also try to implement a little bit more exercise, which I really need to put more into. But, uh, you know, just changing the foods, taking away all the fried foods, things like that. You know, and especially in the black community, fried, fried, fried is all we like to eat. But there's a better way of doing it, you know. Do, I have to give up all, do we have to give up all the fried food, though? Well, every now and then, you don't have to give up all of the fried foods. You know, just just take out a lot of the uh, re replace the uh, the butter with, with right. olive oil, extra uh, extra um extra virgin olive oil, things like that. You know, or just 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 don't go with anything at all. You know. Yeah. Well, one of the things we tried is getting ready to start frying in peanut oil, which I understand is a lot better for you. Peanut so oil is of, very good. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we started to try and incorporate. If I wanted some fried chicken or fried fish, you know, do peanut oil instead of uh, the other stuff. But, you know, you were sharing with me. This is so interesting. I think you did a, a class reunion. Tell us about that, because the fact that you were able to do this and the age group and how receptive this group was, I think speaks volumes to how we are making some progress of trying to be more health conscious. Yeah, this class reunion was the 50th year um, high school class reunion for Kings Mountain High, which we do over the weekend. Uh -huh. And um, their menu consisted of my, my, own, my own chicken soup, okay. with uh, my own chicken, chicken vegetable soup at that, along with Cornish hen, and I introduced bacon wrapped asparagus, no butter, olive oil. They really had a ball with it, along with a side salad, you know, so everybody had a good time with it. Real healthy for them. Okay, so you tell me again, you had your soup that you had put mm -hmm. together, but you said right. bacon wrapped asparagus. So no problem with the bacon. No problem with the bacon because one, it was a drip off. Uh, okay. it, didn't, it didn't sit in its own grease. And the asparagus, which is your, uh, your your leafy vegetable, you know, which is good for you. You know, okay. so everybody had a ball. As a matter of fact, I went away, no leftovers whatsoever. Oh, my. And, no and, and you guys made an intentional effort to put this together and you received no complaints. No complaints at all. The only complaint I, I had was uh, one lady said, we should have got you in the years before. I said, I agree with that. You know, so that was the only complaint. It really wasn't a complaint. To me, that was a compliment. So I appreciated that. And what are some other ways that you encourage or inspire people in healthy eating? I believe you said you've got a cookbook. I know you have a show. Tell us more about that. And then kind of okay. talk about the cookbook as well. Okay. Well, the name of my show, again, is uh, Cooking with Stanford, a plate of one, dinner for two, date night. And that particular show is actually geared towards men. Because uh, one thing I noticed about men, we've gotten away from being able to cater to our wives or our significant other. So I'm helping you bring the romance back into the relationship by way of the kitchen. Um, the I love that. Stuff, right. I mean, because I'm, I'm, I'm all about family and togetherness. Right. And one thing I'm going to say that COVID did do COVID did allow us to sit down and be still. It sure, now, did. It sure did. In the practice, in the practice of sitting down and be still, I was hoping that a lot of men would jump on board and say, "Hey, I need to focus more on my other." You know what I mean? Right, right. And a lot of, a lot of men did. I got a lot of phone calls, a lot of people um, calling, requesting different recipes, and in private private settings where I do, for, uh, I did good attention to uh, to go for other people, and that that worked out real good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then now, talk about cookbook. Go ahead, right. I'm sorry. No, right, the cookbook, cookbook. right? Yeah, right. The, the cookbook is uh is cooking with Stanford, and in that cookbook, I come up with so many different ideas on how to cook healthy meals. Uh, one for diabetics. That's one of the biggest things I really want to tackle because I myself was pre-diagnosed as diabetic over 15 years ago. But what I did is I combated that. I changed my diet and exercise. Okay, I got away with all the fried foods. No more fried now. All the fried foods, and every now and then I might slip, but yeah, I did away with the fried foods. 
uh, implemented the exercise and that really made a big difference. And just water, drinking plenty of water. And, and those seem like a drastic change for people, but if you do it in moderation, which is one of the things, because I'm here to tell you, I have never really drank a lot of water <laughs> until now. And I'm right. making it have it like a challenge for me. I know what brand I like. I know how many bottles I try to achieve. And if I don't mm -hmm. hit the mark, then I'll say tomorrow, I'll try to get that. And I don't always get to that point. As far as exercise, we walk at least three, four times a week. So you, nobody's saying you got to hit good. the gym yeah. and do a whole lot. We walk three to four miles at least three to four times a week. And we do mm -hmm. it on the trail. And so it's very interesting, which is, you know, right. sometimes you just kind of have to uh, change up what you're doing. And as far as the fried foods, I know, you know, I said it before, and uh, Dr. Tracia Black, who is our, our in-house expert, my doctor always says anything of too much is not good for you. So you've exactly. got to do it in moderation. But in moderation, I yeah. what you were doing, you know, out here helping because we've got so much disparity when it comes to our healthy eating and our lifestyles. And a lot of it is generational. And of right. course, uh, somebody that's from the South, you know, all the sugar and the butter, you know, we all have something that is really difficult for us to to kick the habit or to, to try to do right. better. But if you mm -hmm. want to live longer and uh, live a, a more abundant life, I think is how we said it, you've right. got to start looking at some of these adjustments. And see, and that's one of the arguments that I get. I hear a lot of people say, well, my people be eating like this all their lives and, right. and they're still alive. Well, yeah, they might be still alive, but guess what? They have health problems as well. You know, right. you go, you sit down and talk to them, they're taking 10, 15, sometimes 20 pills a day just to keep going. And right. that's the effects of eating wrong. Eating and wrong. the other part to that too is because there are some people like my mom, she just had, it was heart. Um, issues, but beside up until I mean, she's 86 now, but up until five years ago, there was nothing. But the point is, we're just not bred like they, you know, the food that they were eating and the environment, all of those things are different for us now. And it was so very that, different. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. A lot of things uh, have all these different chemicals pumped into right. it. And uh, a lot of people are trying to get back to growing their own, which is a Absolutely. very good thing to do. I mean, you, you, you can't beat it. The taste is all indifferent from growing your own as to what you get in the store. You get in the store, it's all pasteurized, you know, all kind of different ingredients, you know, the hormones pumped into it. You don't want that lingering in your body because it takes you a long time to digest every bit of that. Now, homegrown, that goes through you even quicker. Right. Even down to the simplest things of a tomato. You go to the store. And, and think about this the next time you buy a tomato. You go to a store and you buy one that doesn't have the vine attached to it. That tomato is bitter. Mm -hmm. As long as it's still attached to the, vine, to the vine, excuse me, it's very sweet. And that's what I look for when I go shopping, things like that, you know, little secrets to help you get through. What are some of your other secrets, Chef? Can you tell us without uh, giving away your book? Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I'll say this as an inspiration. Uh, and dedication to my grandmother. She cooked with love. And that's oh. what I do. I'm cooking with love. I, I used to sit at the other end of the counter and um, and watch her cook. Her name was Bessie Barnett. Oh. I used to sit at the other end of the counter and watch her cook. And she had a technique she would pinch. But most people would pinch like this right here. She didn't do that. She pinched finger at a time. Mm. And what she was doing, I noticed she was measuring. And when she got through doing this right here, what she had left, she threw to the side. She didn't need it anymore. So I just picked up on her techniques. And like I said, I, I cook with love. So when I'm done pinching, it's done. You don't have to add to it or anything else. You just sit down and enjoy. Wow, Chef, that's uh, that's good stuff. And we're just an yeah. amazing people that learn to make the adjustments. We just got to be able to receive this information because it's exactly. so valuable. And, and and, and you know what? And it's 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 not an easy transition because you've right. been doing things for so long, you know, uh, the wrong way. Um, it's not an easy transition. But once you get started, you'd be surprised at the change you see in yourself. You'll feel better. You're even more active. You know, you just want to get out and enjoy life even more. You know. Absolutely. So again, where can people catch your show? We're talking to Chef Stanford Mitchum. Um, where can people catch your show? Even pick up your, pick up your book. Well, I tell you what, as of right now, the book is on its way in progress. Uh, it'll be released in within the okay. next two to three months on Amazon. The show right now, we're, uh, we're up in the air because we're trying to decide if it's going to be uh, Roku, if not Roku, um, what Netflix. And we also have 
Fingers crossed. We also have A and E on the on the table. Oh, so we're looking awesome. forward to that. Yeah, that was a big notification to us as of last week. So we do have A and E looking at us as well. So we're well, excited. We're praying. we're praying that that all will happen for you because you listen. I receive it. I receive it a bit of it. I do. So, Chef, if someone wants to reach out to you, especially this uh, cooking for a plate for one, cooking for two, I believe is how you describe okay. it. Okay, that's. Cooking with Stanford, a play of one, dinner for two, date night. Okay. Uh, right okay. there, you can all, everybody can catch me. I'm on Facebook and under uh, Stanford is Cooking. Also on Instagram, that's Anderson01Mitch. Anderson01Mitch, that's on Instagram. Thank on Instagram, you exactly. So much. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. No, thank you for having me. It was I had a ball. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest okay. of your day. You as well. Until next time. All right. Absolutely. And as we continue to keep you informed and keep you inspired, and most importantly, bringing you information, real talk, real resources, and of course, looking for solutions as we work together. We always have to bring Dr. Trish Black in on this conversation. So good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's so good to see you. I have to make sure I say thank you for your support of Praise in the Park this past weekend as well. Uh, quite an event. Thanks to supporters like you and others. I just really appreciate you uh, trusting and believing in my vision and sowing into it. I think that's so important uh, that I acknowledge you and your mom. So Miss Sylvia Greer, Groundwater Solutions and the Genesis Project. I want to say thank you as always. Uh, truly. You are well, thank you. For that. My staff had a fantastic time. I was actually um, out of the city doing business in Henderson, but my uh -huh. staff said that it was amazing as always. The music was fantastic. So we will be back next year. Well, I received that and I'm so grateful for you. But let's talk about something that was just released. I want to dive right in and then we'll get an update from you because you always give us a good pulse of what's happening in the community. But let's talk about this recent survey. The news came out on uh, yesterday talking about the relationship between uh, seniors that are 65 and older, the relationship between COVID-19 uh, if they've had it, they run a greater risk of receiving a new diagnosis of Alzheimer's within a year. And mm -hmm. I, I found that to be very interesting because, you know, Alzheimer's in our community, it, it, it really has started to, I guess, not really grow in recent years. But clearly we've seen a, a report that shows an increase. And hopefully I'm stating that correctly. That's how it appears to be. And now it looks like if a senior had has or had COVID, it may increase your chances. Right. So what you have to remember, Tanya and audience, is that COVID-19 is a vascular disease. Okay. So what happens is, is um, it, it affects how blood flows through the body. Mm -hmm. Our blood becomes more sluggish. And if you can um, imagine a garden hose, you know, if, if the water that's going through is filled with debris or it's thicker because of mud, then it's mm -hmm. more pressure on the blood vessels. Uh, it's more pressure on that garden hose. And that's what happens with COVID-19. Our blood is more sluggish. It is more heavy. It is more dense. And so it is a strain on our cardiovascular system. Our blood vessels feel pressure. And, and it is um, there's a de decrease in oxygen that gets to our vital organs. So uh, the brain, which is our primary organism, uh, organ that runs the whole body, you know, if oxygen is not getting there, then damage is happening. You know, one yeah. of the things that we've talked about over these last couple of years is that we must protect our organs. So we've got to get that virus when we come in contact with it out of our bodies. So for these seniors, you know, um, heart issues, heart disease uh, increases the risk of Alzheimer's and brain damage increases the risk of all for Alzheimer's. And so with COVID-19, we're seeing damage to both of those organs. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that there will be resulting um, diagnoses and diseases that come from that. So I'm not surprised that we're seeing an increase in Alzheimer's. And, and let me just say, this was research done by the Case Western Res Reserve University School of Medicine and recently published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And just to emphasize, and along those lines of what you've said, COVID-19 doesn't cause Alzheimer's, 
it just adds to a growing body of work suggesting uh, that there may be a link between the two. And you've explained it perfectly for us, which mm -hmm. is what I think oftentimes we need. Someone to just kind of break it down, which also gives you even more incentive to take precautions, especially if you're 65 and older, uh, 65 and more seasoned, to mm -hmm. certainly try and avoid getting COVID. Yeah, and I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that, you know, there's research out that you want to prevent your, if at all possible, uh, contracting COVID-19 three times. Because mm -hmm. again, each time there's a little bit of damage to your organs because your organs are not getting that rich blood and the oxygen that it needs. So, you know, all of your organs will, I, I believe we'll see other illnesses besides Alzheimer's that we're going to see increase because of COVID-19. COVID-19 does not, is not the, the disease that killed you. It mm -hmm. is, it, it is, it is what it wakes up in all of the other underlying issues that really we're seeing people who, who have died, they've died from the other illnesses may be exacerbated by COVID-19. So we have to be very protective. And, and so those of us out there who've had it more than once, we need to really be taking protective measures to make sure that we don't hit that third mark where we're seeing real damage. Well, um, let's kind of talk about COVID and president announcing just a day, one day ago, uh, that the pandemic is over. And we're start, starting to see so much shift around this whole acknowledgement. People have already kind of started uh, acting that way anyway, as far mm -hmm. as ignoring some of the precautions. I think I was looking at something. I saw one person in a crowd that had a mask on. I believe it was the Emmys or one of those award shows. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, someone made a point. We only see one mask. And it may have just been that group. But what are your thoughts to the, to the president making that announcement? Well, I believe that, you know, I've said for a while that eventually it's the pandemic will end. But mm -hmm. I do believe that we'll find that there will be a declaration of an in endemic where okay. COVID, because COVID, we all know, you know, I'm still calling folks to explain that they're positive. So mm -hmm. folks are still contracting COVID-19. So it is, it is not over. The state of a, us being in a pandemic where it's a state of emergency, it, it's, it's time probably for that to end. But mm -hmm. The, the uh, awareness about the virus cannot end because it is not going anywhere. You know, we truly believe that it will be with us for years to come, almost like the influenza virus. So at some point, you know, the pandemic has not been officially ended, but at the end of it, um, I'm expecting that it will be declared endemic in our society and in our, in our world. And and that goes along the lines with what uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services are saying as well. We're still operating under the COVID emergency uh, pandemic plan and says it will remain until January at least of next year. And they're expected to renew it. But there's just uh, pretty much a shift uh, on the focus of how it's being handled and the whole idea of the state of emergency. But I just thought it was pretty dramatic and most people would agree for the president to come out and announce that the pandemic is over. Now the World Health Organization, they did say that the end is in sight. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I believe to elaborate on that, it's more so of the current state of how we're dealing with it is in sight. So everybody don't drop your guards and say, we've won this thing that it's over because it's not, that at all, correct? It is not that at all because the virus is still present and individuals are still testing positive. They're still contracting it. They are still getting very ill. And, and so we need to be aware of it. You know, I think again, with the um, when the pandemic ends, then what, what it's, it's a political decision. It's also a financial decision because the financial resources that are required during an emergency state of a pandemic um, are not necessary once it's ended. And right now we've seen that resources have been reallocated, you know, mm -hmm. money for COVID-19 testing or vaccination no longer exists. And so um, the government does not have the resources to keep a pandemic in, in, in effect. So I assume, you know, I assume that pretty soon we're gonna get that official notice. 
Yeah. Well, we, then, but we still have the good old fashioned stuff that you're constantly advocating, which is masking and washing your hands, changing your clothes when you walk from outside to inside. Mm -hmm. Also a hand sanitizer, keeping that handy and trying to keep your distance. I know at my event, you know, and I was talking to people that they were really close because it's really when you're around music, it's, it's natural to talk and some you know, talk loud and some spit kind of transfers or when we were changing mics, I made sure I grabbed some Lysol wipes if they didn't have mic covers and wiped them off in between each person. You know, excuse me, I don't know how much good it did, but certainly it's worth the effort it's to try. The effort. Yes, yeah. Excuse it's me. worth the effort and we need those basic precautions. You know, I think my concern is that I see folks, it's not just the lack of mass, it's mm -hmm. letting the guard, their guards down, having these huge congregate Kind of activities without precaution you know so i think we just need to remember that this is the way we need to live right now and, right. and probably for some years to come we need to take those precautions so those extra steps you know i thank you for modeling that tanya because it's things that we all need to do no matter our work environment our, our faith environment uh where we work Mm -hmm. Don't hesitate. Don't stop taking those ex extra precautions because it is preventing the spread. So let's give us an update on what's happening. You always give us a pulse of what's going on in the community. So you've kind of touched on it. You know, you said, mm -hmm. I'm still making calls, telling mm -hmm. people that they've tested positive. So uh, tell us kind of where things are with you or just in Henderson. Uh, you do a lot of work there, apparently. We do. We do a lot of work there. Well, now we are working on a housing program. I don't know if I mentioned to you in the audience that we are now a Family Promise um, affiliate from North Carolina, meaning we are bringing not only um, housing for the homeless, uh, mm -hmm. transitional housing, emergency shelter, but we are bringing affordable housing. In Henderson, uh, we're, we're having those conversations here in uh, Charlotte, as well as Gastonia. But in Henderson, we are actually about to break ground. We're working with the church, a narrow way Christian fellowship in mm -hmm. Henderson, North Carolina. Uh, we will break ground on um, they are building a church, but they have five additional acres of land that they are dedicating to ending the plight of homelessness homelessness in their county. So we will be bringing uh, transitional facilities, creating a recovery village in that mm -hmm. community. We are also working with the city and county in Vance County to create affordable single and multifamily homes so that the folks who come through our programs can actually end in home ownership. That That's is our great. goal. And we are hoping to be able to duplicate that in Charlotte and Gaston counties as well. Well, certainly we need that. And we know that home ownership is one big step towards a, achieving a generational wealth. So we applaud you for that. Absolutely. Anything else that uh, you can share along the COVID lines? Are you seeing a spike or is it kind of dying down again? Because we were starting to see well, numbers. No, the numbers are still increasing. Okay. Okay. Here, here in North Carolina, the numbers are still increasing. Um, we had gotten to the point where you may have a, a positive, you know, a few a week where mm -hmm. we're seeing positives every day now. Okay. So, so those numbers, um, I know the numbers are increasing within schools. So make sure that your young people are masking. They are uh, per keeping a physical distance uh, whenever possible within the school and that they are washing their hands several times a day. Just, you know, really repeat, repeat like a broken record with your young people. And of course, we know as we start moving in, although the weather's still very nice and gorgeous and we're doing a lot of activities outside, it will eventually change and we'll see even more of uh, cases because we'll be inside together and then we'll head into flu season. But one thing that we know for sure, we've weathered the storm in the past and we'll weather uh, any more storms to come. I truly believe that we just have to be wise and be knowledgeable as we approach these. So as we wrap things up, Dr. Black, again, Groundwater Solutions and uh, Genesis Project, is there anything else you would like to share? No, I think we still are rocking and rolling. Of course, if you know folks who wanna work in this field, we are always hiring because there is always a need. So please consider us if you wanna be in a place that is really impacting the community and impacting people's lives. We'd love to talk to you. You can call us at 704. 596-0505. You see our number on the screen. So please reach out to us. 
Groundwater Solutions, Genesis Project, groundwater-solutions.org. Dr. Tricia Black, I appreciate you as always. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Always. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. And that was Dr. Tricia Black. We are so grateful again for all that she contributes every week. And we're grateful for her support. Again, Groundwater Solutions, groundwater-solutions.org, 704-596-0505 and Genesis Project. They work together. And as you can hear from her, they're working really hard in the community. And that's every day, folks. That's not something that just started. It's continuous. And we are grateful for that as well. We say thank you, Dr. Tracia Black, and to Sylvia Greer, and to your entire team. Well, my friends, it's time for me to move out of the way. I, again, say thank you. I, if I, There are not enough words to say how much I appreciate your continued support. As always, life's challenges make you better, not bitter. I'm Tanya Rivens. I will see you on Thursday. You can join me. I'm filling in for Melanie Pratt on Praise 100.9. Tune in from 10 until 3 p.m. Thursday and Friday. And then, of course, Sounds of Inspiration on Saturdays from 10 to 2. I appreciate you. And on Saturdays, I'm working with a What is the Scripture board game being presented by the first Black board game creator off the West Coast. And it's a really fun and easy way for you to learn Scripture. When people quote Scripture to you, you may not always know where to find it in the Bible. I know I don't. Well, here's a fun and unique way where you can learn and you've got an opportunity to win the board game. I give you a scripture on air on Saturdays on Praise 100.9. And then you go to their website. It's their project. You go to their website and submit where in the Bible you will find the scripture and you may just win a game. So some fun stuff for you. Make sure you tune in, not just Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I appreciate you tuning in. Again, this is Canceling COVID, where we talk to real people, real talk, real resources, because we feel like together as we continue to work through this pandemic, we can work together to find solutions where we can cancel COVID. Thanks for tuning in. Get out and make it a great day and enjoy. <music>